And shake it.
Sanford one Sunday afternoon, as we always did while my folks were having their customary afternoon nap. And uh, something happened, I can't remember exactly what, but I, ne I needed to speak to them urgently, so I rushed into the house, pushed open the bedroom door, and before it was even three inches open, there was this huge commotion behind the door, and the door was slammed violently shut in my face and hastily locked. Now for a six-year-old this was quite shocking. <laughs> So I walked outside, went back and joined Charles, and discussed it with him. And we pondered the matter for a long time. And finally we came up with the answer. There's only one possible answer. My dad, being a banker, had obviously misappropriated a large amount of cash, and the two of them were busy counting the loot on the bed. <laughs> the innocence of you. Today, of course, we know they were making Bruce. <laughs> Seriously, folks, today is a miracle. In these times of two-thirds of marriages ending in divorce, and a lot of other people not even bothering to get married, John and Patty are truly a miracle. They, um, they didn't have an easy time. I mean, they had me as a son for a start. And I tell you what, Bringing up three sons in Rondebosch is an expensive procedure. So they gave up many of life's luxuries, but one thing they never did, they never ever reneged on their duties as a parent, as parents to us. We never went without. We had everything we ever needed, a roof over our head, meals on the table every day, good schooling, we went through the best schools, and the best part of it, the whole lot, was they never got into trouble. Mom and Dad, I'm very proud of you. Give them a hand, they deserve it. Now, if you look at John and Patty, one of them a lifetime banker, the other one a lifetime church secretary. Can you get anything more ordinary or more normal? <laughs> more normal, should I say? <laughs> but it's an ordinary, ordinary family. And what do they produce? Well, me for a start. The eldest son gets a really bad trip and then leaves and becomes a full-time walker. And 30 years, almost 30 years later, still hasn't earned a salary. <laughs> then their second son gets the ideal son. He gets a brilliant matric, varsity pass, he's head of the church choir, 
accomplished pianist. Every, every parent would want a son like that. And what does he do? He runs away and joins the circus. <laughs> Not only does he join the circus, but he turns himself into a superstar. He tours Europe, he tours South Africa, he tours most of America. There are very few newspapers or TV stations in the United States that haven't featured my brother Charles. Anyway, on that note, ladies and gentlemen, I give you the star, my brother Charles. Come say a few words. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> First of all, I want to say what an amazing pleasure it is to be here to celebrate my mom and dad's 50 years. 50 years is absolutely incredible. I remember when my dad was turning 50 and I said to him, um, so what's it feel like to be half a century? And uh, I'm almost half a century at this point, dad. A few more years. <laughs> As you know, I live in Las Vegas, and in Las Vegas we would say 50 years is a big deal. Everybody say, big deal. Big, big deal. deal. It's a big deal, no doubt about it. Um, you know, when I was a child going to school, I thought about it, and, and uh, I thought that everybody had a family with a mom and a dad, and everybody was happy, and things just went the way they went for me. I got to school, and my, my friends and schoolmates would say, well, you know, my mother's an alcoholic, and uh, my dad... Uh, uh, he doesn't work for a living because he just got out of jail, you know. And or, or the opposite extreme, my, my father's a doctor, you know, but he's got three girlfriends and he's, uh, his, my mom is in Europe all the time spending his money. You know, that's kind of reality. And I realized that what we had as a family, the Strawn family, was in fact not the norm. This was, this was unique and special and that not too many people were privileged enough to have that. And uh, let me give an example of how wonderful my mom and dad are. My father at one point uh, gave me a, a birthday present when I turned about 15. And it was a little electric razor. And one of those little battery operated ones. And um, um, for me it was a great gift. And then a few years later when Bruce came of age, um, he got given a razor. And my dad came to me and said, you know, I've deposited money in your account. Because Bruce just got a razor and it wasn't his birthday. And I wanted to make it right by you. I had not even cross my mind that, uh, that, you know, but that's how equal and fair they were. I remember being in the army and receiving a big package of things, and it had my favorite cookies that mom had made, you know, and, and a, a jersey that was knitted with a gable down the front. And what an amazing thing, you know, to have parents like that. And uh, so let me just toast them both and say, Mom and Dad, congratulations on 50, 50 years, and may you have a thousand more. <laughs> And also, you know, I'm going to say this, when I look at that picture of Dad, I, I had a different perspective, as most brothers do, you know. I always thought Dad was thinking, I'm going to go back and make the perfect child. He just kind of messed up the first time around, you know. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, brother. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Touché. <laughs> All right, I'd like to introduce my other brother, but my, what we call my little brother, but he's actually talking to me now, Bruce. Where is Bruce? Uh, yeah, right come on up here, brother. Well, I think in large part, um, what I was going to say has been covered. But um, I'd like to welcome you all on behalf of Mom and Dad today on this very special occasion. And um, let me find my script. Um, not as. Um, well versed with public speaking as my two older brothers, but um, here goes anyway. Mum and Dad, yours is truly a great milestone in 50 years of marriage, which you both have carried out really gracefully through good, good times and bad. Your unselfish and deep understanding and foresight in our growing years contributed in large part to our respective successes. You were always concerned only with our welfare, and as a result, selflessly provided the best that you could in an as impartial way as possible, and in so doing, demonstrated that you had no favourites. Shelley and I have been in England for the past six years, and feel honoured to be our chair for this special occasion combined with our holiday. Mum and Dad, you both were very supportive of us during our planning and departure stage back in 2001, 
for which we are both sincerely grateful and have not forgotten this. We are now in a fortunate enough position and feel honored to have been able to assist each month with a little something towards your pension as a small token of our appreciation for your continued moral support and encouragement. We were both thrilled with your acceptance of our invitation overseas and had a great holiday with you in 2004 with Charles coming over from America. We enjoyed our mutual tour through England and Scotland and would like to extend another invite for a similar trip with you both through Europe sometime soon. You are both great travel companions. May we all have the honour of witnessing your diamond wedding anniversary a decade from now and may you have many more thereafter. Bless you both. Now my wife Shelley would like to come up and um, she's written a poem which she'd like to recite. I remember that one. <laughs> Fifty years together through thick and thin and love. To mom and dad, to say I admire you, um, to say I admire commit your commitment to each other would be an understatement like no other. You've set an extremely high example of what it is like true love to sample. You stuck together as parents should, and in so doing, did the best you could. And of this achievement, you can be proud as standing out amongst the crowd. You are both very sincere people at heart, and this does distinguish you right from the start. To share a future with substance and not one of reluctance. You are certainly both an inspiration in our marriage exploration towards our 50th anniversary destination. Even though your three sons sometimes sang to a different song, you always taught them right from wrong, and their moral fiber helped grow strong. To have brought up three boys must have been a chore, which has made them love you all the more, as both of you, they simply do adore, and this for me is plain to see. If only more couples had your insight that marriage is a plight worth the fight, together to remain, even if you feel at times insane. <laughs> I shall end up by saying that I'm very fond of both of you, and from the heart know this to be true. Your marriage has certainly had no contradictions and merits worthy recognition. And taking into account all the above, this could only result in eternal love. God bless. Luckily, raise your glasses and drink a toast to mum and dad for their 50th. Cheers. Sean and Chaddy. Cheers. Sean and Chaddy. Hip hip hooray. Hooray. Hip hip hooray. Hooray. Bless you both. I would now like to welcome Dad, podium. maintaining a firm friendship with our relations, 
we have been able to keep a sound relationship with our friends. I suppose it's all relative, really. <laughs> it seems hard to believe that it is 50 years to the day that I made my wedding speech in the ballroom down there. There were over three times more guests than we have today. A lot of them were of our parents' generation and are no longer with us. So I feel it appropriate at this stage to pro propose a toast to absent friends. Please bring to absent friends. Absent friends. Before my wedding speech, I had expressed slight apprehension to an old friend, Oscar Thiessen. He said, John, when making a speech, you have only three things to do. Stand up, speak up, and shut up. <laughs> and I intend to do the last of these shortly. Finally, Paddy and I wish to thank our three sons and their partners for their hard work and generosity in giving us this lunch today. Thank you. You can now eat. <laughs> Pleasure to be here in sunny South Africa, in Cape Town, with my family. Thank you for making it happen. I love you guys. John Paddy, congratulations on your 50 years. Um, even though I've just met you, I'm not part of the family already. Um, and it was great to be here on a special day for you. Thank you. This is uh, in, in uh, celebration of your three sons. Um, how odd the fate of pretty boys <laughs> if they dare to taste the joys that so enchanted classic minds get whipped upon their neat behinds. Yet should they fail to construe well the lines that of those raptures tell, it's very odd you must confess their neat behinds get whipped no less. Very good. Hi, Granny and Pumpo. Just want to say congratulations and I love you lots. Okay, bye. Hi, I just want to say thank you for the invite. <laughs> um, and um, no, I just want to say thank you for the invite and congratulations on the 50th anniversary. Um, I appreciate you looking after me and Patrick and Stan at nine. I know it was a difficult time for you and that you still did it and I still think of you as my second parents. Um, and I think I'm going to cry, so go and send this person, okay? <laughs> Hi, John. Anything to say to Penny and John? John and Penny um, are really uh, fantastic people. I've enjoyed nine years, the time I have nine years, and I wish you all luck. And uh, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not good at this, but... <laughs> Turn around and pop out. Can't do Angus and then now. Oh, I see. Oh, 
Okay. Liam? Hello. Do you have a message for Patty and John? Okay. okay. From who? For Patty and John. Is it a message from them? No, from you to them. Oh, from me to them. May it be another 1,357 years that they get through. Oh, okay. Is that right? That's perfect. <laughs> Ivan, Ivan, do you have a message for Paddy and John? Um, oh, no, I don't have to ask John if I can ask Paddy. Uh, oh, congratulations and all out for the next 50 years. The first 50 is the, the worst. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Can I get a message for Paddy and John? Can I get a message for Paddy and John? Yeah. Oh, you two look as happy as you did on the day you got married. Um, I remember it well. And good luck for the next however long. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I had one. Drove and a half. While they're chatting, can I get a message for Paddy and John? Good luck. Good it's, luck. The it's the first 50 years, which is the worst. <laughs> <laughs> Drawing boards and. Hi guys. Can I get a message for Paddy and John? Congratulations, and it was very nice to meet you. Wonderful party. Okay. Dear friend. Hi guys. <laughs> Can I get a message for Patty and John? Lots of love to John and Patty and many more. Hi. Right, I'll say the same. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry. <laughs> Okay. Well, I'm busy. So, Mrs. Bethany and Pumple. Love you guys. <laughs> Do you have a message for Bethany? Sorry. Thank you for a lovely party. And hope it's in years' time we'll all be here to celebrate the diamond. Thank you. Hello. Hi. 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 Do you have a message for Paddy and John? <laughs> well, I'm I'm Anne uh, McGregor, and I'm Paddy's cousin, first cousin, and uh, we've had um, quite a lot to do with Paddy and John because my husband Alistair is. is uh, Big mates with, was big mates with John in school days, and we also know um, uh, Justin, who's Paddy's uh, son, uh, uh, the, sorry, son, Paddy's brother, who died some years ago, and his wife and children, we've had a lot to do with them. So we've seen, um, seen the, the family on and off through the years, and it's been uh, <coughs> great. My sister, Jill, I think you just interviewed her, she was the bridesmaid, but I I was too small to go to the wedding, obviously, okay. so I wasn't there. <laughs> anyway, Alistair, who knows John well. John and I were at school together, and uh, with Ivan as well, the best man. And uh, I, was, I remember when John was courting Paddy, little did I know that I would marry her cousin. <laughs> We are privileged to be here and uh, we wish them everything of the best and it's a wonderful celebration. Thank you. Thank you. Can I, can I get a message for Paddy and John? Right. Right. What, what am I? I'm my marriage. She relates to my marriage. I'm related to my marriage. To Patty and John. And I'm visiting from England. Okay. Very pleased to be here. Do I need to say where I'm coming to the picture? No. Uh, okay. Right. I just wish Patty and John all the best. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so I think uh, I'd like to echo a sentiment as well that uh, I wish John Paddy a long, long and happy married life. And I'm this little monkey's uh, father. <laughs> and that little monkey, do you have a message for your mom and dad in law? I certainly do. I hope they're having an absolutely fantastic time and I've got memories of everyone. I'm Judy Norman. I'm John's cousin. And I used to say lots of lovely things.
And from me, I'm merely the driver of the car who brought Mrs. Norman along. So I don't know the family that well. But the best of everything to John and Pat. Thank you. <laughs> Bruce, have a message for your mum and dad. Mum and dad, it's great to be here out from England and um, we wish you all the best for the future and many, many more. Lots of love. John? Do you have a message for Paddy and John? No, I've got nothing to say to them. It's all been said before. <laughs> Do you have a message for having given your message? Um, yeah. Um, Peter, um, his husband, and I think they're a wonderful couple. And it was really, really great meeting them. And um, wishing them everything the best in the future. Thank you. Uh, do you have a message for Paddy and John? Paddy and John, I love you lots. Thanks for being a, another, allowing me to be part of the family. Take care and wish you all the best. Do you have a message for Paddy and John? Yeah, about a regular speech. Uh, but uh, my favourite aunt and uncle. Uh, they looked after all of us. Uh, very happy to be here. Thanks. Cool, thank you. For those that uh, don't know, I'm Angus Jaw, Auntie Paddy and Uncle John's uh, nephew. Um, my dad was Auntie Paddy's uh, brother. She used to tell me a story that uh, my dad was her birthday present, but unfortunately arrived <coughs> one day late. Um, but he's, unfortunately, he's passed on, otherwise, he would have been here today. And I know my dad would have definitely have said a few words here. I'm not as great a speech maker as my dad, and I hadn't prepared anything, but I thought it would be to to say a few words. Um, you know, Uncle John said that uh, you can choose your friends, but you can't choose your relatives. And I thought perhaps it's me. <laughs> talking about our family, because we certainly uh, tested them in many ways. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you Paddy and Uncle John, um, you know, for us as children, it was the most exciting thing to go visit them. But I'll get back to that later. But um, in terms of uh, having a great aunt and uncle, then, you couldn't ask for better. Because in fact, they, when I was in high school, uh, my parents did a lot of traveling or moving around. And they volunteered to look after me and, and high school for, for a year, and I think that was very unselfish of them, extremely grateful for that, um, and uh, it certainly put me in good stead for life, so the thing is that uh, you thought they would have had enough after me, but when my sister was doing high school and my parents moved again, they volunteered once again to go up to my sister Leslie, um, also totally unselfish, and she said many times that uh, there's not enough ways that she could thank them for uh, their kindness and uh, what they did for Mm -hmm. for her. And Andre Paddy used to tell me a story that my younger sister asked, you know, when she was still young, when it's her turn to go visit, to stay with her. <laughs> John and Andre uh, Paddy. And uh, the, to us it was almost as if it was a, a finishing school for us. <laughs> for us a finishing school. Yeah. Uh, we did our last uh, final years of our teenage years and that would put us on the right step for the rest of our, our careers. Um, but as I said, for us as children, the most exciting thing was uh, going to visit our aunt and uncle, and that was a lot to do with, with them and also the, the, my cousins. I mean, David, uh, I used to remember my dad, I remember one occasion we, we arrived in, David always had little, I call them scams, but <laughs> clever little uh, tricks, and I think he had some little water bottle experiment there, and I remember my dad deciding which way the water's going to spin, and David was always one up on, on most people. And he said, five rand, you decide which the water flows are faster, you're spinning it left or right or something. <laughs> and sure as Bob, uh, David won that bet. Dad uh, lost that. But... And then Charles, uh, as he, from a young age, he was uh, the clown and the entertainment for, probably the best entertainment you could possibly ask for. Um, and this is what we had as, uh, as children almost in our backyard. And we used to go visit, and Charles would be doing these great juggling acts. Um, he would have Stilts. Is that was it for you? Was it a Buzzle Wilkie Circus? <laughs> On a weekend. <laughs> what a pleasure. And uh, then Bruce, I mean, also such an individual. We used to go there and he would have his bedroom. We 
a Star Wars space, <laughs> spaceship <laughs> with uh, probably the latest music. Uh, always had the best technology and the best uh, sound systems. So I mean, for us as children, that was it was like going into some sort of Harry Potter. Uh, Wizard of Oz, <laughs> a weekend away. And we spent many, many holidays together, and for us it was probably uh, the absolute pleasure. And I think if anyone wanted an aunt and uncle, um, these would be the best you could possibly ask for. Um, so, as I said, I'm not the best of speech makers, and as John said, if you should stand up, I've done that. Uh, perhaps didn't speak out clearly, but I'll, I'll shut up. Um, I've been asked to, to introduce uh, Colin Underwood. He was Charles's. Uh, they were in Defence Force together in the Entertainment Courts, correct? Yes. And I still remember watching also part of our exciting uh, videos of Charles doing various acts around the world. And the one was uh, during the Entertainment Court in the, the Defence Force. Charles and Colin used to do shows. Uh, I still remember them doing uh, these unicycle acts on a slack rope, a tight rope, and juggling at the same time, and it was mind blowing. But Colin is here today to do, uh, apparently, do a few um, shows for us here. Um, I don't know where he's hiding because he said he was. Okay, sorry. Colin is about it, so Colin will take care of That's what we're going to do. Well, we can do it two ways, folks. We can either do that word like that, the introduction like that, which was crap, or we can do it a much better way. Uh, clapping, cheering, and hold this. Right, there we go. <laughs> and our mics, mic stand. Yay! Right, we can either do this uh, clapping, cheering, whistling, or we do the miserable way, which is what, what you... Well, it's a professional show. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> oh my God, it's hot. Thanks so much, little kid. <laughs> All right, throw him in the traffic. Here we, go. No. we can do this with clapping, cheering, whistling. Let's have a little bit of a clap, a little bit of practice. Clapping. Sing, and here we go, ladies and put your hands together for the, shut up kid, it's my show. Right, put your hands together for Mr. Colin Underwood. It's <laughs> much better. Yeah, there we go. They say do a good trick first, otherwise you don't, uh, you fail, you crash and burn. So here it is, look, nothing there, nothing there, nothing there. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> Don't look at me like that, sir. All right, here we go. Watch, 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 watch. <laughs> watch. <laughs> Watching? Amazing. Oh, what's he got under the hanky? I don't know, but it looks hell of impressive. What is it? It's my, it's my finger. <laughs> Could have been this one. <laughs> there we go. How about this? Yeah. Oh, I have a raccoon all the way from America. Yay! <laughs> Here we go. He's uh, Rocky the raccoon. I'll give him a tickle. Give him a tickle. He loves it. Oh, lovely, lovely. <laughs> give him a tickle, sir. Give him a tickle. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Rocky the raccoon all the way from America. He's visiting Monty the mongoose, which is like, oh, 
equivalent here, and he does mongoose sort of to lazy impressions. <laughs> and the guy fell off a horse, Eugene to Blanche. <laughs> and Madonna. <laughs> His all time favourite, Robert Mugabe. <laughs> Yes, sir, this is allowed. There we go. Oh my god, it's a runaway child. There we go. It's a radio control child. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just break them all. Break them. This is <laughs> Hypnotize the raccoon. Here we go. One, two, three. <laughs> Flick your finger, sir, and you'll wake up. One, two, three. Take long. <laughs> you always never hypnotize a raccoon. No, no. Big trick! Ah, uh, yes. Look at this! Rocky the raccoon, now a tycoon. <laughs> a tycoon. A tycoon. Uh, raccoon. Yeah. <laughs> I don't matter if you don't mind, I don't matter. Think of a number between 1 and 10. Think of a number between 1 and 10. Have you got it? Nine. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Before the show, and he says, I'm bloody nervous. <laughs> I said, Make it like you know you're doing a sales thing. Now I'm coming up here and I'm going, Geez, there's all family and friends and things, and I'm sort of not shaping very well here. So I thought, we'll, we'll, in, in my show, we'll make it a kind of a, a family thing. So has anybody got um, a, borrow, a lady got a, a lovely a ring yeah. to. Uh, Sorry, um, could you just put up your hand? Uh, is there a lady that's got a... Hold on. Have you got a... Fine, thanks for volunteering. <laughs> <laughs> it's engagement. It's engagement. This is what you want to get rid of. Bring it with you. Bring it with you. Hello, boys. Hey, that's my cousin. Let <laughs> <laughs> me introduce me. <laughs> I thought it would be appropriate to do a, a wing, a ring, uh, a wing, uh, a wing, ring, Russian. <laughs> now, now borrow your ring for the next uh, effect. Don't worry, you will get it back. <laughs> nice. Made in, no. <laughs> Alright, so uh, this ring is the appropriate part of the show. We are going to use it with this one. Can you stand on this side? Thank you, sir. The ring on finger trick. Place your finger out like this. That's it. No, that's the wrong thing. <laughs> or just, you know. Okay. Do you want to go back on the same thing? All right. Here we go. We're going to put him underneath here. Underneath here. We're going to hold it here. Hold that there. Hold that there. Just like there. Now. Are you ready? I throw it up like this. Does a triple somersault. Lands on the finger. It really looks cool if you do this. <laughs> No, no, no. <laughs> Just hold it there. Okay, you ready? Now, don't worry. If this goes wrong, you get uh, you get my car keys. It's a mini. A new one. Yeah. No, the old one. Ready? Can you remember my mini? Yeah. Right. Here we go. One. An appropriate applause when we get this right. Can you just a little bit? This is yeah. great. Yeah. Can you just leave my Excited? <laughs> Here we go. One, two, three. Yes! Okay, next trick. <laughs> um, well, that went well, didn't it? Um, can I borrow this? Mm -hmm. It's called distraction. She'll forget she lost the ring. Place your hand there like this. You're going to meet a tall man. Really that's really <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's called a sponge ball, ladies and gentlemen. It's a new substance just come on the market. Squeeze it like this, it falls into little pieces, and everybody's going to go, wow! Right, open, and it disappears. <laughs> 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 
Raise your hands here like this. Right. Please don't play with my balls like this. <laughs> this one here squeaks. This one doesn't. That one squeaks, that one doesn't. Does, doesn't. Oops. Alright. You didn't break it. <laughs> that, not. Where's the squeaky one? Good. Right. Where's the squeaky one? Good. Right, now. <laughs> okay? Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Ta -da. Which one squeaks? This one. No, that one. <laughs> well, could be this one. Could be that one. <laughs> this one's my one. Goes in my left hand like this. This one goes in your right hand. Close your hand, close your hand, close your hand. No, with the ball in. <laughs> close your hand. Right. Hold it up there. My one, your one. <laughs> Do this together? Okay, okay. we're going to do it together. You have to do this. <laughs> cool, but <Right>. ready? <laughs> to make something really special. Now, <laughs> 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 uh, folks, you'll notice my hands never leave the end of my arms when I do this. <laughs> Name any animal in the world, I'll make it just for you, as long as it's a dog. Dog. <laughs> <laughs> Did you pay your TV license? <laughs> Come on, everyone. It's funny. There we are, there we are, we go like this, we go like this, we go like this. Sorry about the noise. Hello. Can you just step a little bit closer? A little bit closer.
work with Leslie. I did say that you would get my mini keys, so here we are, the back pocket. <laughs> I have my mini keys, and on here we have a whole lot of keys. And if you have a look carefully, is that your ring? Yeah. What's that ring? in your hand, you make it into a little ball, you place it in your left hand, you square it up a sleeve down this side and it comes out there. Are you impressed? <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, are you watching carefully? I'm watching. The ball goes in here like this in slow motion. Are you watching? One, watching. two, three. Did you see it go? No. no. Right. A little bit slower. One. Are you watching? I'm watching. Keep an eye on the bloody ball. I'm watching. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
Should you need a new job, here's, here's one for you. Take that one. Right, we're going to do this together. I'm going to teach Mike how to make a balloon animal, and I think that will be the day. Right. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> Stretch it. Good, you've done this before. <laughs> yeah, no, not for this one. That's right. <laughs> very, very easy. Any idiot can blow these up. I just want to also give my little 
little bit to the evening, uh, this afternoon's thing. John and Patty have always made me feel I'm part of the family, and I obviously met through Charles. But there's one thing that just I remember it stuck. It was after Charles went overseas, and I was still with Boz and Wilkie, and we were in Cape Town at the time, and you went, here's the key to our house. And uh, I really wish you could do that again, because I don't have a home at the <laughs> That, that really, uh, they really did that, and I thought that was amazing. And your voice, this family has always made me feel I have another family, and you're very special. Uh, and my good friend Charles, it's really cool to see him for after how many years. And I promise I'll, I think I should come and visit you some more and, and not leave for so long. So that's my, uh, my little bit. So thank you so much, and I uh, really wish you another 50 years <laughs> together. Lots of love.